Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mike and Shorts. This episode is special for me because I got the opportunity to interact with Suvashish Chaudhary sir, who served the country as part of the Delhi Police for more than 30 years. And he recently retired as the Joint Commissioner of Delhi Police Southern Range. What makes this episode even more special is the fact that I've always had questions around the police and its functioning. This was the opportunity for me to get more insight. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Subhashish Chaudhary, sir, welcome to the Mike and Shorts podcast. Thank you. I'm very humbled to have you on the show, sir, majorly because I think this is going to be very a very interesting episode where we'll talk about the Delhi police and we'll try and uh, kind of deep dive into a few things which the listeners may not be aware about, say, for example. And we'll also touch upon your uh, the latest book which you've uh, released, published. It's called Capital Cops, the unofficial guide to the Delhi police. So I, I have it over here. And uh, I think... Uh, hmm. Uh, I think it's also very important for the listeners also to first get an introduction about you as to what you've done as part of the Delhi police and uh, you know what you're doing currently. So, sir, I'll, I'll start with your introduction and then I think we'll take this episode forward. Right? So, so Ashish Chaudhary, sir, you've been a part of the Delhi police for more than 30 years now. And throughout your illustrious career, you handled some challenging assignments as part of the local police, the anti-corruption cell, the traffic police as part of security, the economic offenses wing. And you've also been a part of uh, the peacekeeping efforts of the UN, where you held leadership positions in countries like the Kosovo in Europe. Uh, you've been awarded the President's Medal for Distinguished Service, the Police Medal for your invaluable service to the country. When it comes to your education, you've done your economics from the Delhi School of Economics, your MBA from the Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi. You're currently pursuing a PhD from IIT. And I think... Uh, it's it's a it's been a long career for you also and on the education front you've achieved so much and currently i think you've retired as the joint commissioner southern range of the delhi police and uh, i'm again very grateful to have you on the show sir and welcome again to the podcast thank you very much thank you thank so you. sir i think on that note uh, i would want you to take this uh, the conversation forward and shed a little more light on your background and your police experience, sir. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Problem here first, you know, I was from a totally non-police background. My father was a civil servant, and uh, but I had absolutely no exposure of police or the police organization. I it was a normal middle class uh, background, and uh, I did my schooling from uh, Saint Michael's in Patna, and then came to Delhi. Then uh, I passed out, I, like you mentioned, from Delhi School of Economics. Then I was uh, teaching for a while uh, in uh, one of the colleges, Ansaraj College of Delhi University. I was teaching economics. And then, you know, like uh, people from our uh, part of the world, and they used to, in my times, they used civil services was one of the uh, important options. And so I also took the civil service exam and got into and became an assistant commissioner of police in Delhi. Uh, so that was the start of my journey. Uh, meanwhile, you know, between uh, my you know, MA and this job, I was also doing some research work in parts of UP and Rajasthan from the Indian Institute of Public Administration. So that also gave me a lot of exposure of rural life and rural problems and, you know, how uh, economics pays itself out there. Uh, but after that, there was a break from economics and uh, still, you know, I'm trying to revive it. Uh, although we see the economic forces play out and the police is at the forefront of these changes. Like, for example, uh, I would like to mention the 1991 uh, economic liberalization when initially there was a lot of uh, doubts, uh, fears among the people among uh, many of the public sector employees and there were a lot of strikes and uh, rallies and all that. So, and there's so many other things also which a police officer 
uh, sees from uh, from the front front seat. But uh, apart from that, you know, it was a normal. Uh, it was a career choice which I had taken. But now, after having completed it, maybe I think nearly thirty five years, I don't regret it. You know, it gave me a good exposure to the world. So, uh, tell me one thing, sir. Uh, choosing police as a career was it your a conscious decision from the very beginning when you chose, say, you had given the exam for the IPS, right? Or did it evolve with time, right? Since you had it since childhood, or did it evolve with time when you saw other folks, you know, getting into the IPS and serving the country and you know, uh, taking inspiration from them. How did it evolve as your aspiration to, you know, get into the police force? See, when I was in school, when I was back in uh, Bihar, I didn't have much exposure to police. But when I came to Delhi and then, then Delhi University, then there were a lot of seniors joining the police force, uh, apart from other uh, administrative services. So that was the time, that was the first time when I saw Delhi police in action. And uh, then, you know, since you know, I was in Delhi, so I saw how police was a very important uh, organ of the state. Uh, you know, whenever there is a, a student's agitation, you see one of the two police officers, they come, they talk, you know, and they talk in a way that it was very friendly. You know, that fear of uniform uh, no longer remained. So that was one, I think, major development which must have clicked something uh, in my mind. And later when I uh, became uh, when I passed out and when I uh, took the civil service examination, this was one of the options which was there. And obviously, you know, everyone wants to get into the IAS first. And, you know, so uh, uh, the police service was one of the options which was there and I took it. And that's how I, uh, you know, joined Delhi Police as an assistant commissioner. Awesome, sir. Uh, so- the, the other yeah. part of the uh, question whether this is a good career choice in hindsight after having completed 35 years i feel delhi police anywhere not only in delhi but anywhere else in india it's a very good career choice first of all you know the kind of exposure that it gives it is people say that you know police is a very you just you know run after thieves and catch no it's not like that police organization is a huge organization in Delhi, it's nearly one lakh, although it has not touched that figure. And you have so many different, which you must have seen in my uh, book. You know, there's so many different departments. There's so many different things to do. You need not be, uh, you know, that uniform variety where, you know, you are posted in a police station or a, a district. It is not that. You can do many other things. For example, if you have an academic bent of mind, you can go for training. If you have, if you are more interested in traffic flow and transport and all that, you can go for traffic. If you are into terrorism, you know, anti-terrorist activities, you can go for that. If you are interested only in law and order, you become a law and order specialist also. So law and order meaning, you know, all the handling, all the crowd and uh, agitations and rallies and dharnas and all that. So it's a very good career choice, I feel. Amazing perspective, sir. I think uh, since you have had such a long 35 year career, uh, do you think you have, have any very strike you? So you've seen a lot of agitations, you've seen a lot of uh, crimes happening in these 35 year period, right? Any striking memories from your career, which you still remember and would like to tell us about, and I think your experience over there, any, any striking memories? Uh, see, I would like to mention one thing when we joined, it was in the late, in the middle to late eighties. You know, that was the time when the human rights movement was uh, gaining ground. And uh, the commissioner of police, uh, my first commissioner of police, who was written the foreword in the book, uh, Raja Vijay Karan, you know, he uh, started a new uh, thing called, you know, you open up the police organization, you have open houses where children are invited to the police stations. And, uh, and then he said, no, no third degree, no one will use any force to get any confession or to work out cases. No means no. And he, you know, whenever there was a complaint of any of this, it was inquired into. And if the police person was fault, uh, is found at fault, action was taken, very strict action. So slowly, you know, initially it was quite a, a new thing. 
But for us, straight out of the university and the idealism of uh, our uh, youth, you know, it was something which came very naturally to us. So we, for us, it was a, a, a very nice uh, transition from a non-police life to the police organization or police life. Uh, so that was there. But uh, the two, three things, you know, first of all, uh, in Delhi, this is the uh, sort of uh, cradle of democracy, you know, Indian democracy. Everyone, wherever, you know, something happens in Bhopal, you have, re- re- you know, the, the echoes are heard here. Uh, if you have anything, any problems in Mumbai, something is heard here, or maybe abroad also, any international events also. So people, you know, uh, they have the democratic rights to protest, so they come out on the streets. So crowd management is a very important thing. So initially, in the initial years, we had to handle a lot of crowds, especially the young students, and they used to identify with us, and we used to identify with them. But obviously, we were on the diff- uh, the other side of uh, the fence. And uh, uh, so that was the Mandal Commission riots, I remember. And you know, it was all the entire North India had gone up in flames. Uh, so that was one very important thing. And uh, I was in a place where, uh, you know, the New Delhi, the capital city, I don't know. So that was the brunt of that. So that was very, very important uh, thing. Then there are many crimes which had taken place and how it was investigated. And yes, I have a recollection of a lot of these and uh, how we worked out, you know, and it is uh, apart from whatever you do, you know, the processes that you follow, but, you know, sometimes what happens is uh, it's just by mere chance that, you know, you work it out, you investigate the case, you finally, you know, detect the case. Uh, Detection means, you know, the person is arrested and uh, all the other things are recovered, you know, whether it is property or whether it's a weapon of offense, etc. So these are some of the yeah, things I have some memorable uh, uh, things in uh, uh, in there, and uh, you know, apart from these, you know, there are so many other things which you can do. Like I mentioned, if you uh, are uh, working in traffic, you know, small things which you do, and it has a, a lot of people are are uh, affected by it in a beneficial way, even in a wrong way. If you take a wrong step, a lot of people start complaining why this cut has been closed. Hmm. Uh, or why uh, you know this construction is going on at this point and at this time so uh, both ways so in traffic also you do a lot of changes which really impact people i think uh, it's a great perspective from someone who's been a part of the police for so long so i think uh, so i'll come back to the point of police as a career right so you said that I think your uh, aspiration evolved with time. You saw the senior officers, you interacted with them, your perception of the police changed with time, right? Now, so tell me one thing, how, what is the training of the police? What, how does one uh, go through the training when he or she gets selected, you know, passes the UPSC exam, say, or the IPS exam, whatever happens as part of the entrance. And what is the training process? Is it very rigorous? I think just like we've seen for the for the army, army has a very rigorous process. Is it very similar to the army or is it a little different from that? Uh, see, I feel initially, you know, during the basic training, see, whenever you get into the police force and there are different levels, apart from the IPS, you know, there are some inspectors also. I'm talking about Delhi. And then there are constables. And uh, at all levels, to get into, a, into the Delhi police is a very, very tough call. And so you have at least four levels at which the executive ranks get into. For example, constables, like I mentioned, sub-inspectors, assistant commissioners, and then IPS officers. IPS officers, you know, they get allocated to Delhi or UT Carter. So uh, these are some of the, you know, the four layers very good. The training is different for all, but it is rigorous for all the uh, different levels. First of all, what is important is fitness. And it is not just physical fitness, but mental fitness as well. See, because, you know, you have to get exposed to very, very long hours of duty. You start in the morning and maybe you can go, you don't know when the, um, your duty ends till your replacement comes. Sometimes they don't come because, you know, this, if suppose it's a countrywide or a citywide problem, then it is, you know, you have, it goes on and on and on. So it's a very long kind of a duty. So you have to be very, uh, very alert. 
as well as you can't be stressed so during the training all these things are kept in mind you know not only physical fitness you have to be physically fit and strong as well as mentally very strong so you know sometimes you know the these who starts these uh, trainers you know they'll shock you with their directions you do it and they'll be very very strict about it very assertive and very strict and you have to do it you see what is the use of that but later on you realize you know for example uh, riding horses you know uh, the, these riding classes now sometimes you used to wonder ki ab to hai nahi there is no you know or you are not supposed to uh, ride horses why do we have this but they used to say no you have to get over the fear of riding horses you have to be very very uh, physically strong to handle a horse hmm. so all these things are uh, there and uh, so they try to build or uh, you know inculcate all these good qualities of fitness then apart from that you need to be imparted knowledge of the of law and many of the police sciences uh, forensic science for example technology etc you know there are so many other things to learn and uh, all the various uh, laws uh, unless uh, you know the laws you will not be able to apply them so that is also one part of the training so th- these are the indoor trainings and uh, then apart from that you have uh, so many excursions and going and meeting people and going to the police station so this is one part of the basic training which happens for a year and then the next year you go to the fields and you uh, get okay. trained how actually it works so that is the best period where you uh, actually go into the field you are accepted as a trainee as an uh, as a newcomer to the police force and even the even an officer is trained for example you know we we used to sit with constables and they used to train us ki you do this do this do that so you really feel good you also learn about their you know thought process what do they feel about so this is a very very important part this two years of training is a very important part and i would say it's quite a rigorous kind of a training where you are evaluated at the end of the training program i think uh, from what i've just heard from you i i have this question in mind so i think you talked about fitness so as part of the police you have seen so much happening throughout the years to also go through mental trauma sometimes if yes then how do you overcome that mental trauma and come back to that because i think you see a lot of things which as citizens we are not able to actually uh, you know get into your shows and understand right so you see gruesome crime happening so i think it's a lot of mental uh, trauma for you as well as a police force and as police person how do you handle that you see uh, you you're very right you know when you see blood and gore and you see you know persons or individuals and families getting whatever harmed in whatever way you know people losing everything in one go maybe you know some kind of a theft or robbery and everything is gone maybe a fire has taken place or a burglary has taken place in a jewelry shop and everyone everything gone you know and they uh, the the businessman or the person or the owner you know they are totally they are absolutely they are you know weeping and crying so you know these are things which affect every policeman because after all we are also part of the folk of the society and we go also get affected but what i have realized uh, and sometimes uh, uh, accidents you know where very young people getting killed on the roads all these things are there and they really affect you what i have uh, realized that you you empathize with them okay but you don't get emotionally connected now this is a very very difficult thing to do i don't know how to you just that you know so that you are able to take proper action rather than get swayed by emotion now this is a very important thing and, uh, and if you if we don't do it then we are also mentally disturbed by that so we go back home and you know this is thing this yeah. thing is playing uh, in our minds etc so and maybe this is one of the reasons why a lot of policemen <clears throat> become alcoholics also and stress you know they have a lot of stress uh, later on also which affects their body and you know mental condition 
Hmm. So I think it's very interesting point you've raised over here about uh, differentiating between empathizing and you know connecting emotionally with that uh, the person who's getting killed or who who's going through that trauma. Right. I think that's that's very important for even us to understand that you go through so much and still you're doing your duty as part of the the police and serving the country and saving us and keeping us. you know uh, safe from all kinds of negative things going on in the society right so one more thing i uh, had this in mind that through the movies in bollywood for example the police is shown as very macho and you know they uh, they are like the saviors for us i think that's also true in one end at as part of one part of the police but how do you think it is different the image of the police is uh, portrayed usually in the in the movies as very uh, macho and uh, you know uh they are the supreme heroes and stuff like that right uh, physical fitness is shown like they have a lot of muscles and they can do anything they want to and all that so how is it different from what is shown in the movies the the image of the police what is your perspective on that yeah i think uh, especially the bollywood bollywood movies <clears throat> you know there is a two contrasting uh, sides the image which they portray one is that image the macho image which you say they portray you know where uh, salman khan or someone you know they just destroy their opponents and then throw him out of the uh, you know <laughs> the, yeah um, so this is one uh, way and uh, the other one is you know lampooning which goes on they lampoon the police they you know is a rotund police officers they come you know they come late to the scene of crime when everything has happened and they are corrupt and they are uh, you know when the police station they show that you know whenever there's a vip phone call they just, they release the criminals etc you know all these things are, so lampooning also goes on as well as you know this macho uh, image which is portrayed i, I feel that uh, policemen yes they are strong uh, but you know throwing physically or physically tackling someone is not something uh, which uh, uh, we do often Uh, because uh, unless you know someone is trying to harm himself or someone else and uh, you know then only he is physically overpowered but uh, as far as possible we don't physically touch him you know even uh, even during the law and order arrangements and all that you don't really we try and stop him with barricades and all but we don't really touch them so it is uh, not that you know we are that physical kind that you know we tackle all these criminals etc they look very good in movies and if uh, a police officer does this and tries to beat him up like i said you know the you know, the initial the, the human rights movement and all that i'll be hauled up this is not done you don't have to beat up you know there are legal things you know what we can do is to arrest him prepare a case and send him to the court and the court will take action you know we are not there to punish him we are only there to prosecute him you know we are only there to uh, arrest him and send him to the jail so this uh, is a myth which is uh, which should not be there and uh, at the same time you know it is not that police officers they come up they come late and you know they are dishonest it's not like that but yes i would not uh, say that you know there are no rotten uh, apples in the sack there are people like that who uh, you know who indulge in corrupt practices and all that uh, but at the same time this is also one of the forces where the action taken is is uh, much much higher than any of the government organizations so we take very very strict action even dismissal from service if a person is caught doing it you know sometimes he just this is dismissed from service and every year there are people who are dismissed based on the suspension department in inquiry takes place etc so we are really uh, also taking action against those people but yes despite all that there are people who are still indulging in it uh, but what is more important is the system is working correct correct sir thank you for raising this point and making it very clear for us to understand that how things are different from what's shown in the movies and what's there in real life as well right and a very important question which i have in mind is that what is the relationship of the police with the citizens of the city so i'll particularly talk about delhi police and what kind of relationship do we have 
with the police i think i may have a different perspective and you see the citizens every day in in the city right so what is the current relationship and how can we improve that relationship if i think there's something to improve upon it sir what do you think and what is your perspective on that delhi police is a very strange relationship with the with the citizens you know <clears throat> it basically moves in ebbs and flows sometimes it is very good sometimes it is quite low for example in the times of nirbhaya you must have seen that you know it had reached at a very low level people were blaming the police for everything for whatever that happened to this uh, innocent girl and uh, they were also asking for the resignation or the suspension of the commissioner of police now this is one aspect the other is sometimes you know when a good case is worked out even in if you are not talking about the whole city even in a small area in a small locality if suppose there's a, a shop has been burgled or someone has been robbed and the police works it out in uh, good time and also recovers all the property etc people are very very happy you know they'll have uh, functions to felicitate the police they'll write letters they'll do everything the next day you know if they have a complaint of some other kind you know of uh, some police officer or some policeman beating up a, uh, a citizen they'll again go on you know go out and hold a dharna etc so it really flows in ebbs and in ebbs and flows and also what i have noticed in delhi that people who have never been exposed to the police system but what they read from the newspapers especially the social media and the media you know they go by that so they have sometimes they have very very negative uh, image of the police sometimes when you ask them okay, have you ever gone to a police station have you ever interacted with it? they'll say no no i don't i don't need to because i have but they still hold very negative uh, impression of the police on the other hand if you go to very underprivileged privileged areas Uh, you know some like sangam vihar and or mongol puri or sultan puri etc you know there the poor people for small things you know if they have a fight in the home between a mother in law and a daughter in law or fight uh, of neighbors or there was some kind of a quarrel between uh, say between the neighbors in the neighborhood for water or small things you know which Uh, they are really struggling for every day you know they the first thing they do is to go to the police so for them police or police station is the place where they get the closure of their problems same things don't happen in a posh locality right people don't want to go to the police and but still you know whenever there is a there is a problem they they go to the police and those people who actually have interacted with the police most of them have left uh, you know it has left a police uh, positive image but when you expect something which is unreasonable for example if you have suffered a loss in the business and you want the police to recover it for you or you want you know there's a uh, fight between the partners of a business enterprise and there is a partnership deed also and then you expect that police should take action and you know register a case etc these are civil matters these are matters where police need not interfere and should not interfere these are things where the civil court has to take care now what they want that you know uh, the cases they get delayed a lot in civil in civil suits and civil courts so what they want is a quick solution to the problem so they go to the police if the police doesn't do it or seeks further clarification if what is the what is the proof etc and you know you have a contract uh, this is a breach of contract so uh, you know they'll say that police is not doing enough having said that uh, you know we have a very elaborate system of beats you know beat system of policing where we also take care of senior citizens we also take care of people who really need our help we also take care of uh the school students you know the school children when uh, they go to the school you know there's no eve teasing or they don't have any problems with the traffic etc crossing the road etc so we take care of all these things so i feel that you know 
there is a lot for the police also to do to improve the relationship and also the citizens also both have to realize the limitations of each other now police uh, the citizens the, some of the genuine complaints are that policemen they are not very uh, polite to them now what i 100% agree not all policemen are polite and you know uh, they should be courteous and they should be deal with them with uh, empathy and politeness and uh, and courtesy so these are things which police also has to improve and i would say that it is not it's an individual thing it is not an individual thing it is also generated by the system so as a police organization also the seniors also have to ensure that policemen have you know time for themselves for their family so they are not stressed out they don't have very very long hours so we have to really reform the system as well you know the people talk about uh, talk a lot about uh, police reforms i would say that you know this you know small things that you can do to ease the life of the policemen who are at the cutting edge they who are dealing with the people daily so they have to really uh, take care of their uh, needs and give them more time give them more family time so then they will show more and more patience while dealing with people mm. so this is very important training yes people also talk about training you know the police should be trained well but training is in a classroom thing but when they come out out in the open they have to face the you know heat and dust of the roads and there what they need is a balanced mind a very uh, unstressed existence so this is very very important now police persons also have complaints against the uh, citizens they feel that you know sometimes they see a crime they don't report if they report they don't want to be enlisted as witness now unless you know police men and uh, unless the people of delhi you know they start taking a stand and they come out and give evidence in the court of law the culprits will not be uh, you know cannot be prosecuted hmm. so here but at the same time you know their fears about facing about uh, you know they should not um, they don't want to uh, you know testify against the criminals so that fear should also be addressed you know and the harassment which they face maybe in the courts that should also be addressed by the police so these are some of the things so it's basically it's uh, both ways you know both have to do a lot to improve the relationship and one that is achieved when that is achieved everyone will have a very comfortable existence hmm. both police persons policemen as well as uh, citizens of delhi correct 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 so i think you you've shared a very important uh, you know you light on a very important point about the uh, the police and the citizens and the relationship i think on that note you've also published the this book called capital cops the unofficial guide to the delhi police i think and it's essentially an unofficial guide to the delhi police so i think as part of the question i just asked why do you think such a guide is needed for the citizens i think it's i think it's a natural uh, uh, progression to this question so why do you think a guide is needed for the citizens you know people should realize that just a few policemen out on the roads that you see it is not police organization you know there is a whole system and process uh, at work to provide the service now this is very very important because you see the police station and you feel that you know it's just a person sitting there you go there and you know he'll take your complaint and register a case it is not like that whatever police does you know it is according to a system and it is a very time tested system which is going on from time immemorial uh, you know from uh, people say from the delhi sultanate times and then it has evolved and come you know then 1861 the first police act was made it was the modern police force and then uh, since then it is the same you know system of uh, policing and how the uh, case is registered and how it is prosecuted and how everything takes place but apart from that there are so many other things which are new uh, departments have come up 
which have really started from the police station, but you know they have split out from the police station. For example, the traffic police, the special branch, which is uh, into intelligence, then this crime branch, which is in a plain clothes, but only for investigation purposes, etc. And then special cell, which is for terrorists, uh, anti-terrorist activity action. So the whole lot of uh, departments are there and they are there is a system at work so uh, these systems then you know give uh, the service and it is not just a, a person uh, oriented thing it is a organization which is working Correct. so what the purpose of this book is to make the people aware that you know these things are happening and uh, there is a system at work and therefore you have to be uh, you and also uh, some of the things which there are you know, there are certain limitations which a police can do uh, or can't do so people should be aware of the limitations of the police you know we can't go beyond the law mm. because whatever action is taken it is scrutinized by you know, the judiciary by the court of law if you arrest someone he has to be produced in the court of law so you can't just arrest anyone if you have a enmity with your uh, um, someone with your neighbor is not that you know unless you know some kind of a cognizable offense is made out so i have right. defined what is a cognizable offense and what is a non cognizable offense non cognizable where police cannot take action uh, right. or you know arrest so these are some of the things uh, which i have made so what are so people should i feel that in delhi uh, people learn about the police only from the uh, from the newspapers. crime columns of the newspapers or from the social media, you know, they somebody is complaining, somebody is adding, you know, this has happened with me, this has happened to him, etc. So that is the thing. But the reality of Delhi police lies much beyond all that. So I think uh, great points you raised here. What compelled you to write such a guide? Why did you write a book like this? Because I have not seen anything like this ever in my in my lifetime, whatever I've read. So why, why such a guide and what compelled you to write this book? Like I mentioned, you know, people should be aware of the workings of the police. They should be aware of how police ultimately uh, does something good or some policemen do something wrong. And what is the way out? What do you do if, if you hear or if something is something wrong is done by a police officer? Then do you have any uh, redress or you feel that everyone, so that's what I'm saying, you know, there is a system at work and if you file a complaint, what will happen? If you, uh, if you have been wronged by some other person, you go to the police and what police does, how investigation takes place. So one should realize and an educated and aware citizen uh, will not only improve police office, uh, the police organization, they will also be uh, able to take the service of the police better, better, in a much better way. So I think that was your motivation, sir, to make the people aware about how the police functions and, you know, shed light on different aspects of the police, which we don't really know about. And we should know from, uh, I think, from somebody who's served the country as part of the police. I think that's very important. So uh, one more thing, sir, you, you've you been a part of Delhi police and Delhi police is a part of, you know, the Union Territory, it comes under the, uh, under the Lieutenant Governor, which I read, and it's a little different from other, you know, uh, police departments, say, for example, if I compare it to Mumbai police, it comes under the state and, you know, different police states have different police departments, right? How is the Delhi police different from the other departments, if there is any difference and how is it unique as in, do you have any perspective on that? See, there are two, three things. First of all, all the police organizations, uh, all over India, all the states, you know, they are uh, governed by the same set of laws largely. But the major acts, you know, for example, the Indian Penal Code, which is which lists all the punishments, you know, all the offenses and the punishments. So everything is defined, you know, what is from uh, uh, theft to hurt to robbery, everything is defined. So this is Indian Penal Code. Indian Penal Code applies to all over the country you know, to all the states. Similarly, all the other, uh, uh, some of the major uh, acts 
like the CRPC, the Criminal Procedure Code, the Evidence Act, what kind of evidence, you know, what is the evidence which gets accepted by court, etc. So it defines also as a one book. So these three major acts, they apply all over the country. But then there are uh, minor acts which are either local acts like we in Delhi we have this Delhi Police Act, uh, Mumbai Police Act, etc. You know, so these are some of the minor acts. And then there are uh, the special acts, for example, you know, something called the NDPS Act, Arms Act for a violation of the uh, you know arms uh, rules, etc. Uh, so these are Excise Act. So these are the some of the special acts. Some states apply. Uh, some some states. Uh, we have these uh, local acts also, and these are applied by different states in different ways, and they can make the, the changes according to their own requirement. So these are the basic statutes which apply all over the. But apart from that, you know there are in uh, major in one of in the, in the major cities, including Mumbai, Chennai, Cal uh, Kolkata. Delhi, you know, we have this commissionerate system. Now, there are many more cities uh, which are becoming commissionerates. For example, Lucknow, Noida, Gurgaon, etc. They have also become commissionerates, where a commissioner of police, uh, whether it is he is of IG rank or uh, DG rank, you know, they head the force. So, in Delhi, Delhi has something very special. Is this is the this is a uh, sort of a state with an assembly at the, it's a union territory basically which is headed by a lieutenant governor and Delhi police is under the lieutenant governor is under the uh, MHA through the lieutenant governor day to day control it is uh, the commissioner of police and he reports to the lieutenant governor of Delhi uh, and lieutenant governor is appointed by the central government and since this is a, yeah. a union ter territory like all the other union territories but this is the union territory also with a with an assembly so we have a chief minister also correct uh, but this delhi police is under the central government police is not under the state government so this is one important difference number two this is the police force of the capital city of the country other police forces like Mumbai, they are not of the capital city. Yes, they are part of the uh, Maharashtra state, but not of the of the center. Correct. So this is one important difference. I think uh, it's it's been a, a educative session for me also on 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 Delhi police. So uh, on on the closing question I have over here is: What is your perspective on technology? How is technology affecting the police force? How is it making it easier for you to, you know, say solve crimes or even predict crimes or riots and all that? Is that happening in the in India, as in, in even in Delhi police, uh, adoption of technology and how is it making things easier for you? Uh, you know, police forces, I'm sure uh, not just Delhi police, but police forces all over the country. You know, they were the first to adopt, they are the, really the first to adopt technology. For example, you know, whenever, when horses, when the mounted police was replaced by cycles and motorcycles, bikes, you know, that was the first technology, first kind of technology which, is, which was uh, brought in. Then other vehicles came. Then communication, you know, the wireless communication. So uh, police forces were the first ones to adopt maybe the army did earlier than that but police forces were one of the earliest adopters of this technology uh, now the wireless technology etc it has really uh, grows and leap uh, has grown in leaps and bounds now apart from that now with this itc you know uh, information technology and communication technology we adopt technology we have computerization now when uh, if you go to a police station now, the FIRs are not registered by hand. You know they are okay. typed into the key, keyed into the uh, something called the CCTNS system, which is a government of India initiative. It was about uh, ten years old now, and it was started. And it is you know it is a is a network connecting all the police stations of the country. So right now it is only for Delhi state, but soon it will be connected to. But they are connected to the center. 
central server, the NCRP. So uh, it is. Uh, so ICTs are also adopted in a big way. Now, apart from that, we have, you know, we uh, have a lot of investigation done uh, on the basis of digital footprints. Uh, so that is also one of the important things. Now we have, you must have seen CCTV cameras all over the city. Now CCTV cameras are also very important uh, because you know they uh, help in uh, identifying the criminals, whether it is a motor vehicle theft in the yeah. night or any uh, serious offense in the day. Uh, so uh, they are they help, and also now artificial intelligence will also be used in a big way uh, to. Uh, identify uh, criminals uh, who are in our database for example right. if it's in a, it's in a you know near a girls college if some eve teaser or someone who's who's uh, arrested earlier in an in a sexual offense case if he is found it will give an alert to the nearby police officer to police station or to the, or to the police vehicle that you know his this person is near this college or the school so, uh, so that kind of a thing will also be used very shortly. So we are, the use of technology is growing in leaps and bounds. And uh, very soon, uh, we will, a lot of things which are being done by, by human beings will be replaced by, the, uh, by technology. Amazing. I think uh, in the coming years, we'll see a lot of change when it comes to uh, even reporting FIR size. And you just mentioned that we have a central database and as citizens also, we are now doing uh, FIRs online. I think that's, that's uh, recently, which I even saw and, uh, you know, heard and experienced, right? So technology will change the world and even the police. So, so on that note, I think uh, I'll close the episode, sir. And uh, thank you so much for coming into the show and, you know, uh, talking about your experience. And I think the book Capital Cops is, is uh, very, is an amazing read because it also talks about a lot about the history of the uh, the police, which I was not aware about. Right, it it goes back to the times when Alauddin Khilji was there uh, in Delhi and he was ruling, and and you've shed light on the history and other aspects, which as citizens of the city we should definitely know about the police. And I think it's it's a great step in the direction of improving the relationship as well, uh, the of the citizens with the police. So on that note, sir, thank you so much for joining in, sir. And I'm again, very humble to, you know, uh, interview you and talk to you about the Delhi police. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Devyanj. But at, uh, on this, as a final note, I would say that, you know, Delhi police also needs good people to join its ranks uh, at whatever level, you know, whether uh, at this officer's level or uh, even at the constabulary level, uh, the life is not easy. It is quite tough. But it is very, very interesting. And you see the you know, history playing out in, your, in front of your eyes. <laughs> and uh, so this is a very, very challenging career. And uh, people must join this force. And uh, I am sure with the variety that it offers, they'll really have a gala time, a nice time uh, in the force. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me in your uh, podcast. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Take care.